Okay, so let me just turn that off. So what we want to do is basically add the bouncing material to the wall as well, so, so that the ball will bounce off with maximum energy. So if I click on the first wall, then you can go here and if it's not, if you can't already see it, just click on bouncy or type bouncy and then just drag the material into the box collider material part of the wall. Click on the second wall, drag it over again, and the third wall, drag it over again. Okay. Now what you guys will need to do, I already did this previously, is click on the bouncy material itself and you want to set the dynamic friction and the static friction both to zero. Now you just highlight, click on zero, enter. Highlight, zero, enter. And also the bounce combined, you want to set this to maximum. So what that means is basically if the object is still or if the object is actually moving the dynamic, the friction of uh, the objects that it interacts with it will be zero. There's no friction, there's nothing to slow it down or stop it or lose any energy like we would in the real world. You know, objects don't bounce forever. They eventually slow down because of air resistance, because of energy. Uh, it loses energy when it hits the wall, when it scrapes on the floor or whatever. Okay, so that's that needs to be set up there. Now if I click play, ball starts off, bouncing, and there we go. And we probably want to add, we probably want to add this to the paddle as well. I think the bouncy material needs to be added to the paddle. I don't think I did that. Okay, and that's much better. So if I click on paddle, bouncy. Oh, we've already got it. Okay, that's great. So if you've not added it, just make sure that you drag bounce it onto the material inside the paddle. Okay, so you may have noticed that in the previous video that there was a problem with the ball. Now this is this is the way to fix it. So which is a normal thing in game development. There's always things that come along and you always have problems, you always have to fix them. Um, uh, challenges. Challenges, not problems. I love the challenge. Okay. So We've added the bouncing material to the walls. We've set the dynamic and static friction to zero, which has solved the ball, the ball bouncing problem uh, so that it constantly bounces at its maximum speed. Okay, now what we want to do is, like I said before, is we want to have a game over state. So if the ball goes past this bottom area here, is we want it to be game over. So the first thing is we want to establish is, okay, what position does the ball need to be for it to be game over? So it needs to be below the paddle, of course, because that means the player just missed it. So if I click on ball, click on W, uh, if it's not highlighted in the scene, click on F uh, whilst your mouse is over the scene, and then just zoom out slightly so that we can see everything, and then just drag this down. And what I want to do is I want to get the Y position, which is the up-down position, of where it will be game over. Um, and it looks like minus 5 is okay. So what I'm doing is clicking on ball, looking at the transform, and then getting this information here, just so I know what position it will be for game over. Okay, uh, I'm just going to hit Command and Z, or Control and Z, a couple of times, just to get it back up to where it was. Because all we needed was the information, not the... Um, um, we didn't need to actually move it. So if I double-click on the Pong scripts, if I expand this and double-click on ball, and what I'm going to do is just copy this and I'm gonna drag this in here so you guys obviously would you can copy and type this out yourselves um, oh uh, note as well please always uh, scripting is case sensitive what I mean is it has to be you have to get it right with the upper or lower case so you notice update here has a capital U um, if you do this uh, a lowercase U it won't work okay so uh, scripting is case sensitive inside of unity all right so what we're doing is in the update function, remember the update function gets called every single frame, it checks or does everything inside of the update function every single frame. So what we want to do is basically check, hey, is the ball below the minus five position? And if so, it's game over, okay? So if transform, remember transform contains the position, the scale and the rotation information. In this case, we want to check the position dot y um, and you can see what this does is these dots here basically add a more specific part. Um, so, for example, let's say um, uh, you know country dot town dot street dot number, and that makes it more and more specific as the, uh, inside of the libraries. That's probably the best way to describe it that I can think of the top of my head right now. But what we want to get is the y position. All right. 
And if it's less than, minus 5, okay, then we want to call this. Now, the if the if statement here, you can actually write, if, if, you, if inside of the if statement you only have one command, like this command here, is you can put it to the right, and it just makes it a little bit tidier. The way that I've done it before is like this. I've added the brackets, tab over, and then added the lower bracket here to close the if statement. You can do it like this, both is okay. Um, and if you wanted to add some more commands here, this is just a comment. then you can add some more commands. Uh, but in this case, what we're doing is basically adding the application.load level over to here. And if you remember from the menu scene that we had here, um, we basically, application.load level loads the level or loads the scene that we define inside of the brackets, inside of the, uh, uh, the, the parentheses here. So the menu scene, we get that information from here. Now, I've wrote this wrong, so if I click on enter, copy, go back into the script, and then delete that, and then paste, it's called menu. It's not called menu scene, it's called menu, so it has to be correct, it has to be a have right name. Okay? And then it has to be within these inverted commas because it's basically a piece of text that we want to, we want to send as an argument to this function here. We want to give it a parameter. Okay? So if I click File and Save, or Control and S, or a Command and S, go back into the Unity scene, on the bottom right it'll compile, there's no errors. Now if I click Play, what we should get is once it goes past the minus 5 position, the ball, it should load the menu scene, hopefully. There we go. Okay, click Play. Boom, boom, boom. Bouncing around. Excellent, there we go. Okay. And that works great, that's exactly what we want. So let me just check, I think for this video that was pretty much it apart from playing it in the browser. So I'm just going to click File, Save, Scene, Save, Projects, just as the habit to, uh, to save things. And then what I'm going to do is click on Control and B or Command and B to build it, which basically compiles the project into a single file that can then be played on the web. So it, we, set, we defined before inside of Unity, we said, hey, we want to build these scenes. Sorry, file, uh, build settings. We want to build these two scenes. If I clicked on more scenes, then that would make the build file bigger. Okay. So if I go over to my Chrome browser, and there we go. Um, it's running inside of the browser, and, and like we mentioned before, this is going to be on the web soon, and you guys can deploy it to, your, uh, to a website or to your own website or something like that, and you can show your friends. Uh, so if I click on play, there we go. And I'll let this bounce around once. Okay, pass minus five, and there we go. It loads the menu scene. Click on play again. Boom, there we go. And that's perfect. So that's basically what you've got now, guys, is you've got a playable game loop that goes round and round and round. Um, you know, you can add more scenes in there, and that's what we're going to do. This tutorial series will continue. Uh, but that's, that's the kind of basics of building a game inside of Unity. The scenes, the loop, um, obviously the... the, the the basics of what a game are, what a game is, the challenge. Um, we've added a button, we've added the walls, the physics, and so on. But that's pretty much it, you know, in terms of like a basic game um, inside of Unity, and we've also deployed it as well. So, you know, pat yourselves on the back if you've got this far, anyway. But like I say, this tutorial series is going to continue. I'm going to do the next video soon, um, and we're going to make this a little bit more difficult, and we're going to add some more scoring as well. So we're going to have the counter tick up. And we're also, uh, sorry, a score counter tick up. So the longer that you stay inside the game, the more score you will get. And we're also going to add things like effects. We're going to make it look a little more pretty. We're going to add some sounds. Um, and, you know, we're going to flesh it out a little bit and make it more interesting. Because obviously part of the game is, uh, it has to, for a lot of games these days, they have to look visually very attractive or else people are just not interested. So, but for now, anyway, um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, check out the next one, and I'll have that posted soon. But uh, happy developing, everyone, and I'll speak to you all soon.